Hello, and welcome to our latest Cortex Labs webinar, Customizing NeuroQuant, Custom NeuroQuant Reports and Other Recent User Suggested Updates. My name is Stephanie Harrison. I am the Marketing, marketing Manager for Cortex Labs, and I will be the mod moderator along with a couple of our colleagues for today's webinar. I just wanted to go quickly over some general housekeeping items before we get started. You were muted upon signing into the webinar and will, and will remain muted during the duration. Since you are muted, we encourage you to ask any questions that you have during the webinar through the chat box, or the question box would be better, actually. We will answer as we can, as we can during the presentation, and if we can't get to your uh, question during the presentation, we will definitely answer it at the end. You should see the displayed control panel. Um, if you don't see it, it might be hidden under another window you have opened on your computer, so you might want to search for it. Also, if for some reason there are sound issues, please use the chat box to inform us so we can correct that quickly. Thank you all, thank you for joining us today, and we will begin now. Today I am joined by Dr. Julia Albright. Julia is the Director of Pro Product Management here at Cortex Labs. She is responsible for leading and managing Cortex Labs products from concept idea through to commercialization to meet customer expectations and business needs. Before we begin, I just wanted to give a little background on Cortex Labs and our products. Excuse me. Incorporated in 2002, Cortex Labs develops and markets cutting edge brain imaging solutions used by neurologists and radiologists in hundreds of clinics and research centers throughout the world. Our flagship product is NeuroQuant, which is the first FDA cleared CE marked Health Canada, Korea, and Australia licensed medical device software commercially available. Cortex Labs products automate the process of measuring brain structure volumes from MR images, providing physician excuse me, physicians and researchers subjective, valuable, enriching quantitative data to aid their clinical treatment planning and disease progression monitoring of their patients with neurological conditions, such as multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, epilepsy, and brain trauma. Now I'm going to hand it over to Julia. Thank you, Stephanie. So for today's uh, webinar, the the goal is that we will talk about all the changes with NeuroQuant 2.3 and uh, in detail uh, I will go uh, through the following updates and features. So first question that always uh, is asked of us whenever we have a new release is why did you create the update? And our response for this particular upgrade is that we have a lot of features and in our previous releases, but there were some that were either missing or customers were asking for improvements on existing features. So what was updated? On the triage brain atrophy report, we have uh, several new structures, and I will talk to you in detail about that. Our CSV file export function has significantly expanded. And then when we look at the new uh, features that are available, uh, we created dark background reports uh, that make it easier for radiologists reviewing reports in a darkened room. Uh, we have created custom volumetric reports, and we also now offer alternative reference data for researchers uh, to review uh, our data alternatively. And those are the items that I will go through during today's uh, webinar. Let's start with the triage brain atrophy report. Many of you might already uh, know it and use it, and you might have noticed that since we upgraded our online system to 2.3 several weeks ago, uh, that there is several new structures. So we went from 39 to 44 brain structures. We are now not only displaying the left and right values, but also the values for the total structure. And the added structures uh, of the, the five that we are added are actually all total lobes. So uh, all the structures have been placed in their respective lobes. So we have uh, three cerebral brain substructures, five substructures for the subcortical structures, four in the basal ganglia, three in cingulate, seven in the frontal lobe, five structures in the parietal lobe, uh, two in the occipital and ten in the temporal lobe structures. Also, uh, you might notice when I go to the next slide and I show you the uh, triage brain atrophy report, the Z scores have been removed uh, entirely. 
So the outline of the report is effectively the same as it was before. We have the, the labeling and the color coding on the top saying neuroquant triage brain atrophy report. We, we still display your site information on the right hand side. Now we're adding below that the version number of the report that you are seeing. So in our case, it's version 2.3.0, and then all the patient information below that. Uh, this has not changed, this section has not changed. Uh, also, the images that are being displayed below, the, the cross-section through the hippocampus has not changed at all. But then what you see is the two tables uh, below the images. And I have a, a slightly enlarged image here. We still provide the intracranial volume with the ICV percentile. And then the order of the uh, brain structures uh, below that also has not changed. Uh, white matter, gray matter, and ventricles. And then the subcortical structures, cerebral, uh, white, uh, cerebellar, gray, brainstem, thalamus, and diencephalon. The basal ganglia were also there before with the putamen, the caudate, the nucleus accumbens, and the pallidum. What is new on the left-hand side now is the cingulate. This used to be on the right-hand side, and we have the anterior, posterior, and the isthmus uh, in these structures. When you look at the columns, you see we now have left, right, and total. And these are all percentiles. We no longer show the z-scores. So those are the, for example, for the cerebral uh, white matter, the f for the left hemisphere we have uh, the 54th percentile, the 66th percentile for the right, and a total volume for the cerebral white matter as the 60th percentile. This is just an example. So that is the left side of the table. Um, the right side of the table shows you uh, the four main lobes, the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. And the new, one of the new uh, parameters that we introduce is the total val value for the lobes. So the total left, total right, and total combined percentile for uh, the frontal lobe, and so on. The color coding is still the same. So when a particular structure is what we call outside of the norm, so either outside of the 5 percentile or outside of the 95 percentile, uh, we color code it red if it is below 5 percent and uh, blue when it's above 99 percent. This is from all main structures. For any uh, ventricle, we color code the other direction. So when the ventricles on the left hand side are outside of the 95 percentile, we color code in red. If they're below the 5 percentile, we color code in blue. So this is just to give you an impression on um, how how the color coding is being done. I'm going to a, a few clinical cases here. So this one was a likely normal statistical variation. You see only very few structures with color coding. I have another example with a left side edema. So here you notice that most structures on the right hemisphere are fairly normal and some even are atrophied. Well, a majority of the structures on the left hemisphere are actually increased in value and outside of the norm, uh, which might lead to the conclusion that this could be a left-sided edema. So it's just, a, again, a snapshot that you can look at to evaluate your clinical case. I'll give you another example. We have a temporal lobe focused atrophy. So you notice that while there is atrophy in several structures all over this brain, there is particular red color cluster, sorry, red color clustering in the temporal lobes, uh, right here at the bottom right hand set, uh, side of the, the table. So there's a, a very particular clustering of uh, brain structures outside of the uh, five percentile. As this, uh, another uh, clinical case, here we have most of the lobes being within the normal range, but then we have uh, cortical and subcortical structures that are being significantly atrophied or outside of the norm. And that, that's a, a good example of uh, 
cortical and subcortical atrophy with preserved lobes. So these are just uh, a handful of examples uh, on uh, for for the a triage brain atrophy report. Uh, the last one that I'm going to show you is a very extreme case of uh, severe atrophy over the entire brain. So we have a global atrophy case where almost the entire uh, brain structures are, are showing significant atrophy. So this is the uh, triage brain atrophy report. As you know, the the triage brain atrophy report is a, is a very good overview report that allows physicians to view lobes as well as subregions. Uh, the custom requests that we got from a lot of uh, few who are using the triage brain atrophy report, uh, they wanted to see the total lobe. Uh, percentiles as well as the individual structures below. So that's why we added uh, the total lobe um, regions as well. And we also added the uh, combined left and right uh, volumes in addition to just showing the left and the right. So a lot of uh, the cases that are being uh, evaluated with the triage brain atrophy report are traumatic uh, brain events, but there could be also other neurological conditions. As I mentioned, we have 44 brain structures, uh, and as well as the intracranial volume, and we always show the left, the right, and the uh, total volume compared to normative values, and, and we provide the age and gender matched percentiles. Now, we, we, we went through the color coding for the high-level review. It's a quick and easy uh, way to evaluate whether there's one of those particular patterns, for example, that I showed you with the red patches or blue patches, uh, the clusters of color. So that's, uh, and of, of course, we color code every time we are with, uh, outside the 5 or 95 percentile range. So that was the, the triage brain atrophy report um, as, a, as a quick overview for you. Um, the second component I want to talk to you about is the CSV file export. I know many of you are doing clinical research and on top of your uh, everyday clinical evaluations, uh, and many of you are using the CSV file to uh, put that into your clinical studies. We have revised the CSV file to now include a lot more uh, data than it used to. So the revised output includes many more additional brain structures, and it also includes the values for the 95 or 5 percentile range. So uh, it will provide you all the information for a particular brain structure. So um, when you get, for example, a neuroquant um, a CSV file output, you will actually end up with a, a CSV file that has about uh, 1,200 columns because we provide total volume, left, right, um, uh, hemisphere value, the asymmetry between them, then whatever the absolute values for that, the percent of ICV, the percentile compared to norm, and then the 5 percentile and the 95 percentile. So it's a lot of information for each individual structure. And uh, we are also uh, including the CSV file for lesion quant. Lesion quant now includes uh, 150 brain structure values, and then of, uh, on top of that, the lesion information available to you. The uh, CSV file requires a separate license. So if you're currently not using it, but you're interested in it, um, you would have to uh, talk to your representative. You can reach out to us and we can connect you. So I wanted to show you on your uh, system how you can check whether or not you have the CSV file and also then how to actually access it. So we have on the user interface a little green uh, icon that says export a spreadsheet if you hover over it. If you click on that, a zip file will be downloaded on your computer. and um, that includes two files typically. One is the NeuroQuant CSV file, and another one is the LesionQuant CSV file. Uh, those files will only be created if you actually have run NeuroQuant or LesionQuant cases under your particular username. So here's an example for a NeuroQuant CSV file. You see that you have 
uh, the patient's name, patient ID, gender, age, date of exam, and then a norms uh, description. And why the norms description, uh, we will come to that later. We are now having multiple norms available to use for your clinical research. And then here's an example of amygdala. It's alphabetically ordered, so amygdala is the first structure that shows up. Um, the total volume, left side, right side, percent of ICV, um, for the left, for the total, and for the right, and then we also have the asymmetry for these structures. So this is just a, a quick overview on how a CSV file looked. As I said, for NeuroQuant, this will contain about 1,200 columns for you to evaluate uh, and to use in your clinical research. For LesionQuant, the CSV file is a little bit more uh, manageable. We have the same information about patient name, ID, gender, age, exam date. And then uh, we have, uh, in our example, the first structure that shows up is a cortical gray matter. We have the total volume, left, right, and the percent of ICV, and so on. So there, it's uh, a much uh, smaller number of, of structures, but it also includes then the lesion information about total lesion volume counts and so on, as you can see it on a lesion quant report. So that is the improvement of the CSV file uh, that, that we have expanded. As I mentioned, it is enabled through a separate license. So uh, if you are currently not available, if it is currently not available to you, but you are interested in it, please reach out to us and, and we can help you through that process. It is downloaded through the interface, as I showed you, through that little icon. It's available for both NeuroQuant and LesionQuant, and we looked at this. And it inc includes um, extensive quantitative information for brain structures and lesions with their normative data. So that was the CSV file. And I want to move on to uh, the new functionality that we have available on NeuroQuant. One of the new features that has been asked of us for a long time is dark background reports. I'm sure many of you review the NeuroQuant reports along with the NeuroQuant segmentation overlays in a darkened room. And the feedback that we got from customers is that sometimes that is very um, uh, exhausting to the eyes when you have to go back and forth between uh, the white background um, NeuroQuant reports and the darkened images. So now we have introduced uh, the uh, possibility to choose whether you want white background or dark background reports, both for NeuroQuant as well as for LesionQuant, so that the review of the images together with the reports is a lot more comfortable to you. Uh, the selection for the light or dark background is made on the user interface, and I will show that to you. And the dark background reports are being sent straight to your PAX or DICOM viewer. So this only applies to future reports. So if you have a report already created, uh, just uh, selecting the dark background report will not change any reports that have already been created. For that, you would have to reprocess uh, the report using the dark background uh, check. And then the white background reports are still available on the user interface, just in case you need them uh, for faxing, printing, or any of those um, functionalities. So let's have a look at that real quick. So this is the user interface again, as you are used to it, um, with their new checkbox available uh, circled here in red that says dark, uh, dark background report. Once this is selected, all reports from that point forward will be uh, created with a dark background. The ones that are going back to the a PAC system or DICOM viewer, while the PDFs that are available on the system will actually stay with a white or light background. So any uh, PDF reports that you're downloading directly from the user interface will still have the light background. So that's a, a site-specific uh, choice that you are making for your facility. Here are some examples of the darkened background reports. Uh, we have done our best to make them as legible as possible with the dark background without still having uh, uh, spots where the images are too bright uh, for the human eye to view in a darkened room. So uh, we are hoping that this will help many of you review the images with more comfort. The second new feature that I want to talk to you about are volumetric, uh, custom volumetric reports. 
what I mean with custom reports is that you can now choose any nine structures that you prefer to create your own reports. This is just an example of one of those reports. You see that the structure still remains the same compared to our regular NeuroQuant reports with the color coding on the top, then the patient information, the morphometry images are still remaining the same with the cross-section through uh, the hippocampus, and then up to nine structures that are selected by you. These are in table format on page, uh, page one, and then on page two we show the uh, the graphs of the norm representation within the, the reference database on the second page. So what are, our, are my possibilities here? We have 71 available brain structures. These are all structures, either individual structures or combined structures, that NeuroQuant currently can identify within uh, the human brain. You can select up to nine different uh, structures. You can select either left, right, or left, right combined, or the asymmetry for any of these structures. So you, what was the, the goal for this? You can, for example, reduce the overall number of our uh, standard NeuroQuant reports. So you can combine, let's say, the age-related and the uh, hippocampal asymmetry report. This just reduces the number of AE titles you have on your site. You can also create your own AE titles for not neurological conditions that we currently do not support with standard NeuroQuant reports. You can have uh, NeuroQuant reports that are specific to a referring physician, for example. You can incorporate structures out of the 71 available ones that are currently not on any of the uh, standard NeuroQuant reports. So all of those are always uh, matched, and age and gender matched, to a reference data, either to our normative reference data or to alternative reference data and we have two currently available uh, that we will go through. All this requires a separate license. Again, uh, please contact us if you are interested and, and we can um, uh, talk about how to make that available to you. Currently it does require a separate license. Let's go through the process of how to create uh, such a report. This is the user interface. Uh, this is the same user interface you're currently using with the QMonitor site configuration and license manager. You will notice that there is no a new tab that's called custom report setup. You can select either a new report or uh, change an existing report or use an existing report also as an initial input. Next, you select uh, your reference database. The default is our NeuroQuant uh, normative reference data, the one that, you are always, uh, that you're used to when, when using already NeuroQuant or lesion quant. And then you select up to nine different structures. And uh, these structure selections is a simple drop-down menu. It's alphabetical. You just go through the individual uh, structures, you pick out the ones that you like, and then you also need to select whether you want the total volume, the left, the right, or the asymmetry for that particular value. And if you want, these are radio buttons, so you can always only select one of them. So if you want, for example, for the hippocampus, you want the total volume, the left, the right, and the asymmetry, you need to create four different structures for that. After selecting all the structures that you want, and you don't have to select nine, you can select as few as you want, uh, but up to nine structures, uh, you also add a report name and a report AE title. There are a few limitations to that. Uh, the report name has maximum 16 letters and numbers and should not contain any special characters. And then the report AE title has also a maximum 16 letters and numbers, no special characters. This includes also no spaces. And we recommend that you include either your site name or an abbreviation for your site name. Once you hit submit, uh, a new report name is added to your uh, list of available reports. So when you go on the uh, Q monitor and you select report type, 
now we have the newly created report. The reports are listed alphabetical. In our case, we called it HASM1, and it adds the term custom report to it that you can now select if you do manual uh, uploads for the reports, you can add that now to, to your choices. Uh, if you are using the CTX node, uh, the AE title that you created will have to be um, configured on your either MR scanner or PAC system. So let's look at uh, a couple of the uh, reports, examples. Uh, this is an example uh, that we actually just, just created. We have the four hippocampi uh, volumes, total left, right, and then the asymmetry. We also selected the superior lateral ventricles, the inferior lateral ventricles, and the hippocampal occupancy score. And you notice that the system created two tables, one for brain structures where we have volume uh, percent of ICV and the reference percentile, and then also a table that only has two values, either in a symmetry index or in this case a hippocampal occupancy score with a reference percentile. And then on page two we have the report, uh, sorry, the graphs that are, are following um, the normative percentile uh, for the structures that we selected on page one. So what could potentially be clinical needs for running a customized report? Uh, you can select up to nine brain structures, so uh, you could you create those reports in order to combine existing reports. You can choose uh, disease-specific reports, or it might be uh, specific to one of your uh, if, uh, referring physicians, for example. The steps uh, that I showed you in order to create a custom report must be followed in the order that I showed you, otherwise the system will actually uh, create an error and you have to start all over again. So you first have to select your reference data, then select the nine structures, uh, create a report name and assign an AE title, and then once you hit submit, uh, the new custom report is being available to you on your system. Let's look at some of the clinical cases. So here, if you want to either minimize potential errors by the technologist because you use more than uh, one report, you can combine two existing NeuroQuant reports. You combine the age and the asymmetry report uh, by adding the hippocampus left, right, and the asymmetry, the occupancy score, superior lateral ventricle and the inferior lateral ventricle, exactly the example that we just went through when creating, uh, when going through how to create a custom report. And here we show this again. This is the selection of the normative reference data, the hippocampus values, the occupancy score, superior uh, lateral ventricles, inferior lateral ventricles, and then we called it age and a sim report with the site name and, uh, and an a indication for which report it is for the AE title. And the resulting report uh, we see right here. The second example is a specific neurological disease evaluation for which we currently do not have a standard NeuroQuant report. The example case we selected is ADHD. There's a, a new research coming out more and more about ADHD, and there is a, a number of structures that are currently being evaluated for this. So we picked the cerebellum, whole brain, hippocampus, caudate, frontal lobe, uh, nuclear cumbens, superior lateral ventricles, amygdala, and putamen. So those are the structures that uh, we want to create for uh, ADHD-specific neuroquant report. So when we do that, we go through the same process. We pick the NeuroQuant default normative database, and we select all our structures. We want to select the total value for all of these. If we are interested in some left or right asymmetry, we, of course, we can select that as well. We call this report name, uh, for example, ADHD, the site name underscore ADHD1, just to give an example. And it's relatively quickly uh, created, and then we can use data that we already have, 
run this particular report, and here's a report that comes back for example for a six-year-old female with all the structures that we had just identified, uh, the total volume, the percent of ICV, and the reference percentile, and then we see the plots on the second page. And fortunately for this particular patient, there's no uh, outside of the range uh, color coding here. So in this particular case, uh, we do not see any abnormalities for these structures. As a blow-up version of the, this particular report, just to give you a better view. The third case study or example is an example for Huntington's disease. Here we again look at other structures that are not available in standard neuroquant reports. We look at uh, putamen, pallidus, caudate, nucleus accumbens, uh, endorhino cortex, thalamus, uh, diencephalon, cerebellum, and the brainstem. And the same as that we have been doing before, here we now actually used one of the previous reports and altered it and actually put changing the existing report. Uh, but again, we, we go through the same steps as before. We pick our uh, uh, structures. Uh, because we selected a previous existing report, they were pre-populated, we just made our changes wherever we wanted to make changes, save the changes, and then we are able to create the reports for this particular uh, custom volumetric report. And the output, again, the same structure, the reports all very much look the same, and you see the results for this particular patient. So I've mentioned with the custom reports now a handful of times that we have to select the reference data that we want to uh, compare our data to in the custom reports. And the reason I've been saying that is because we now actually have alternative reference data that are not uh, stemming from healthy subjects, so we don't call them normative reference data, we call them alternative reference data because they're actually in particular for, from subjects that had MCI that converted to AD and then we have a second alternative uh, reference data based on patients with diagnosed Alzheimer's disease. So instead of comparing your, your patients with healthy subjects at the age range from 3 to 100 years, now you're comparing them with subjects that actually have the disease that you su uh, suspect they have. The available age range for the MCI and um, AD alternative reference data is 55 to 100 years. Um, and cannot be used at younger ages. And it's, it's really uh, meant as an alternative view of your information. It is not intended for clinical use at this point. It is intended for research purposes only or to give you additional information uh, for the non-clinical view. Here is the um, visual of our normal population compared to early MCI, late MCI, and then Alzheimer's disease. Uh, just to give you an, a, an impression on how the, the information changes if you go from one to the other. So how do I create a custom report with an alternative reference data? The process is the same as what I explained to you before. Uh, so you pick uh, whether you want to change an existing report or, or create a new report. You change the reference data from the default normative reference data to either AD or MCI. And when you do so, you will get an error message, not an error message, a warning message that says that you have selected an alternative reference data that does not contain healthy subjects and it is not intended for clinical use. You need to acknowledge this message before you can move on. So once you selected that and you go through the other steps, uh, once you create a report, you actually now have a warning message on the report, again, that indicates that this has not been created using a normative reference data, but alternative reference data. Which alternative reference data has been selected is part 
of the header of the report now as well. And then of course on page two again we have the warning that this report was created with an alternative reference data that does not contain healthy subjects. So this is the, the information on the header of the report, a NeuroQuant MCI reference database, and then the warning messages on the first report page, and then the warning report, the warning on the second report page. So what happens when we do this? So we run the same subject once with the normative database, and you see some of the values being outside of the range significantly. The inferior lateral ventricle at the hippocampus is outside of the range for this particular subject on the normative reference data. When I use the uh, NeuroQuant MCI reference data, you notice that actually the right hippocampus yeah, the right hippocampus and the inferior lateral ventricle is now suddenly well within almost exactly in the middle of the reference data, indicating that this particular subject probably has MCI. And since the database was created from subjects that had MCI converting to AD, uh, that this particular subject might also be within the MCI range and has a very high likelihood converting to AD. Here are the graphs for that particular patient with the uh, normative reference data on the right-hand side and the MCI database on the left-hand side. So we see, for example, the ventricles moving from the edge to the middle of the reference data, and same with the combined hippocampus and the right hippocampus moving straight in the middle of the reference data. The second alternative is the Alzheimer's disease reference data. So here, this example, we have the normative reference data again on the right-hand side and the Alzheimer's disease reference data on the left-hand side. You remember we have the warning message to inform you. And you see that uh, this is a different subject. Uh, the subject has even more severe Alzheimer's disease, or, sorry, uh, atrophy in the hippocampus, total left and right hippocampus, and then increased value of the inferior lateral ventricles. And then if you compare that when you run it with uh, the uh, Alzheimer's disease reference data, you see how the values are much more centered uh, in line with uh, what would be considered normal for a reference uh, data set that is actually comprised of Alzheimer's disease patients. So you see here, on the right-hand side, the values for the hippocampus, left hippocampus, right hippocampus are moving from the right red area in the normative reference data charts to the central white area of the Alzheimer's disease uh, reference data. So it's just uh, something to use for your clinical research. Uh, it is not currently released for, for clinical use. Um, however, it is available to you. Uh, with the selection of custom reports. So again, the, the reference data is comprised of scan data from individuals who were diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease or MCI. It's an alternative view to look at different brain structure volumes. It is limited to ages 55 to 100, and it provides additional data to evaluate disease progression in MCI and Alzheimer's disease. It is only available for custom volumetric reports, not for our standard reports. So this already brings us to the final thoughts. Uh, we created this particular release hoping that we can bring more customization to you. Uh, there's additional information uh, for the CSV file, alternative reference data, and custom volumetric reports. And, and we also wanted to make sure that we respond to your feedback about improvements for the, for example, triage brain atrophy report and 
a dark background report. So those are the things that we feel very strongly about, that we respond to customer feedback, customer suggestions and, and needs, and we're continuously improving our product um, to make sure that we can meet your clinical needs. And we hope that this particular release will help you significantly in using NeuroQuant uh, more effectively. As you all know, because uh, most and all of you are current custom uh, NeuroQuant uh, users, um, NeuroQuant is fully automated, which re uh, reduces or minimizes the subjectivity of uh, quantification. It reduces cost and provides you extra time savings. We are 510K cleared and CE marked. Our uh, analysis can be used for patients from 3 to 100 years. And we are comparing all of our uh, brain structures to either the normative uh, healthy controls or MCI or uh, Alzheimer's disease reference data. You can also compare your brain structures to a baseline or prior scan. Uh, this is always available to you. So if there are multiple scans processed with NeuroQuant, the information will be plotted on the same screen, on the same report. And then now with the customized NeuroQuant reports, you can have an um, unlimited number of combinations of, of brain structures uh, uh, of custom to your clinical needs. We're using verified and optimized uh, scanner parameters and as you know we're supporting all major manufacturers from GE, Siemens, Philips, Hitachi or Toshiba. So all those are still uh, remaining the same and there, there has not been any change. This brings me to the end of this particular presentation. If you have any questions, I highly encourage you to type your questions in the question section uh, at the, at the uh, webinar user interface. So I see the first question is uh, when the webinar or whether the webinar will be available for uh, for you to review at a later point or share with your colleagues. And yes, of course, a recording will be made available. We're planning on making it available uh, mid September, uh, mid December. I'm in a long wrong quarter of the year. <laughs> So in mid-September, we have another a live recording of this coming up uh, in December. And once this has been completed, uh, a recording uh, will be made available to you. I have another question here as to whether or not the norms or segmentation algorithms have changed at all with NeuroQuant 2.3, and they have not. So there are no changes in NeuroQuant when it comes to segmentation algorithm, and there have been no changes in norms either. So if you are running a NeuroQuant 2.3 report and you're comparing the outputs to a previous report that was run with NeuroQuant 2.x, so a 2.0, 1.0, two, three, any of those, it is uh, comparable and you don't have to reprocess those scans. Another question I have here is whether or not we are developing more uh, disease-specific NeuroQuant reports. And uh, the short answer is yes and no. Uh, the uh, the, uh, we are always looking for new diseases that, that can be uh, used uh, for, for NeuroQuant evaluation. And we are um, working with uh, specific customers on, on new reports. We are looking forward to your input also whether or not um, or which reports and which um, diseases we should look into. But we are hoping that you don't have to wait now um, until we come up with a new specific uh, report, you can create your own custom reports if you need anything in particular. So another thing that has, uh, there's a question here regarding scanner parameters. The scanner parameters for NeuroQuant 2.3 have not changed. So the scanner parameters you have been using before uh, can be used uh, now as well. Uh, the updated scanner parameters, uh, if you need a, a version from us, we can email it to you. Please feel free to reach out to us and let us know.
So another question I have here is regarding the dark background reports. So we have, as I showed you how to select the dark background reports, and uh, the dark background reports will go straight into your PAC system. Uh, however, there's still white background reports available through the user interface for download. So the PDF that you download directly from the user interface uh, still includes the white background reports. So if you need them uh, for printing purposes or, or similar, there's still a white background report available to you, even if you select the dark background report option. Thank you very much for joining us today, and we hope to see you all soon.